Uh, there might be some code cut off on the left hand side. Hope you all know what angle brackets look like. Um, some contact information. You can actually download the. Uh, you can download it now. The uh, presentation uh, at that address, and I'll show it again at the end. So where am I? Uh, Twelve years uh, building websites, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's been my day job since '99. So uh, WordPress I've been using since 2005. I've launched a ton of sites. I currently manage six. It's going to go down to four in a week because I'm no longer going to be the principal presentation engineer at Kramer, where I am now, moving over to Molecular. But, a uh, little background. What is Molecular? It's another agency consultancy. So. Introduction to HTML5. HTML5 is a lot of things. It's ongoing. So, uh, that can actually be fun, but it's also a challenge. So, specification isn't done. Things cha can change underneath you. Um, it also means there's not always an answer for things. So if you started doing web development in the last five years, you could go and read Zeldman's book or something and say, oh, this is the best way to do this. There aren't answers for a lot of this stuff yet. Uh, we're making them up as we go along. So that's actually fun too, but uh, it's occasionally controversial. I won't cover any of that because I want to have fun. It's full of cool stuff that's got both browser vendors and web developers excited. So Canvas is probably the big one that made a splash. But there's a bunch of other technologies that are getting people excited. Um, and the point of this is it's something to pay attention to, experiment with, give feedback on, and, uh, and that's why we're here today. So what are we going to do? We're going to talk about marking up a standard WordPress blog using some of the new semantic elements and attributes. This is a subset of specification that's relatively stable and is usable right now. You can use a small bit of JavaScript or the modernizer library to make styling these new elements work in Internet Explorer. A little aside on that, um, Internet Explorer just doesn't know how to, doesn't handle unknown elements the same way that the kind of good browsers do. The good browsers just say, you meant this to be some sort of markup, I'll let you style it. Cool. Internet Explorer is like, I don't know what this is, I'm going to ignore it, you can't do anything with it, whatever. This little chunk of JavaScript fixes that. Meet the new semantic elements. I'm not going to read these, these are all from the spec, um, but I'll talk a little bit about them. Section uh, is one of those ones that the experimenting is kind of teaching me about, and I'll get into that more later. Uh, when I first looked at it, and there's some tutorials that use it in this way, people are using it as like a, you know, this is where all of my articles go. And this will all make sense later if you don't know anything about what I'm talking about. Um, but I've learned that that's maybe not the way that it's best used. Um, so you can see it's it's, Meant for subsections, basically, is the way that they intended it. A new section on a home page or something like that. Nav, now this one makes perfect sense. It's for navigation elements. Uh, this means that browsers can now know that that UL that you have, that nice UL, because you all use ULs for menus now, um, it actually represents navigation. So it could do interesting things with it, if, you know, applicable. Uh, and accessibility concerns as well. A voice browser could know this is navigation, which is great. Article, uh, this speaks right to blogging, right? Publicated, you know, published content, you know, with a date, all that kind of stuff. It represents, uh, you know, a chunk of content that is standalone. So you'll see this tag all over the place. This one behaves the way that you would expect it to. Uh, side, this is one of those ones that's kind of a soft controversy, but controversial. Um, Although you see the word sidebar in there like five times, uh, there's actually some discussion on whether or not you should use it for the typical sidebar that a WordPress blog has or you know, half the sites on the internet have. Um, I went with it. Some people say no. Uh, I just went, it says sidebar in there, so I let that be the deciding factor. H group. Uh, this one <laughs> makes the most sense when you're reading through the specification and looking at some of the things. When you think about WordPress, because you have a title at the top, and then you have that thing below it, the subhead, that has no semantic meaning at all. It's just a P, and it says description or whatever. In an H group, you can actually have that H1, and then mark up that, you know, just another WordPress web blog. You can mark that up as an H2, and now they have, they're semantically attached to each other. Before, they were set adrift. So this H group is that's the, one of the best ways to show what that actually does. 
You can use it in other ways as well, but in the context of this, it's a no-brainer for an example. Header? Header. It's for a header element. Divide equals header. They, search the, they literally searched the internet and said, what are people doing? Oh, divide equals header is like on 45 billion websites. Let's make a header element. Um, H1s, logos, that kind of thing. Footer? Again, divide equals footer. Found a bunch of them and said, let's make a footer element. This is another one of those things that's changed as we have gone on. Originally, they said, oh, you can't put a nav element in the footer. Everyone said, wow, what are you, crazy? Of course, we've got to put nav elements in the footer. And the spec changed, so you can now. Yes? You say we are. Are you on the committee? Or? No, it's just the okay, okay. group of people that are experimenting with this stuff, and I'm sending emails and that kind of thing. So you're all in the we, too. If you want. <laughs> It's, that's actually one of the things. If you read some about the way that HTML5 has been developed, um, and you know the way that specs used to be developed, it's supposed to be more open. So you couldn't actually like see the inner workings of the XHTML group or the CSS2 group. It was a private list, and they would just you know, they would have an open list where they would discuss things with people. These guys are all out in the open, so it's like you can kind of see the conversation happening live, which is fun if you're nerdy, which I am. Uh, time marks up time. Pretty cool. This is actually one of the neater code samples uh, in terms of WordPress name. So um, it's, you know, you can imagine user agents using this information for things. Syndication could use it for things. Pretty cool. Uh, the new form elements. So these are new input elements. I mean, new input attributes. Um, Placeholder text, uh, if any of you code JavaScript, you've all done this, where there's some sort of, you're managing the, the hint text that's inside an input. This is now handled automatically. It's actually a jQuery plugin that, that does this now. It's just released, so it's like, uh, it handles it if, it's got, if it supports the placeholder attribute. If it doesn't, it does the fancy stuff. Uh, email addresses, so if it's type email, you visit it on, on an iPhone, for example. Uh, there's an input with type email. As soon as you enter into it, you get an at symbol, you get a dot com, you get a different keyboard because I know, hey, you're typing an email address. Same thing with web addresses. So URL, it'll put the www, as a, it'll put the dot com as a shortcut, things like that. So there's a lot of things that accessibility enhancements, usability enhancements that browser vendors can uh, put into place for form fields because there's actual information that they can read and, and know about them now. So these all show up. Isn't that all, new, all that new stuff just about perfect for marking up a blog? Heck yes. That's my big joke. <laughs> not much of a joke. Let's look at some code. So this is where, oh, that's not bad. <laughs> We're okay. Yeah. All right, I, the blue bits are the new bits. I did two samples. I have two sample sites. I didn't even mention that. One is I've been working on the default WordPress theme, trying to get that done. Uh, the first port took like an hour because divide equals header, turns into a header. And I left the IDs so the styles just worked. Well, you can't see that. Can't see it yet, but you'll see later. I left the IDs and so the styles just worked. Um, and then there's some stuff in the head that I had to change. But there's other bits that I had to monkey with, and I'll kind of explain where I ran into problems. Not problems, but learnings, findings, something like that. Um, so I'll go through the stuff that's changed. Challenges. Challenges. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the doc type now, um, how many people know like an XHTML doc type? And can you t actually type it out of, out of, right, right now? No. Okay, I can't either. Like I said, I've been doing this for 12 years. I made an XHTML page like the day after the spec drops, and I can't do this. I can actually write these. So, and this is standards mode in every modern browser. You can do this safely, and it's awesome. Uh, the HTML, um, there's no more XML namespace. Just the language, so simplify. Um, the caracet, simplify. So you just do UTF-8, done. Or you know, you insert your character set here. Um, now this is the this is the key right here. This script type equals text JavaScript, and then this little loop right here is the magic that makes these elements styleable. Is that a word? Styleable in Internet Explorer. It's really simple, and it's so simple, it's almost surprising that it works. And I'm also wondering how somebody figured this out. I'd love to find out. Uh, it takes a list of all of the new elements. So 
There's this article aside, audio, canvas, etc. It takes a string, it splits them into an array, loops through the array, uh, and just creates one of those elements. Just creates it, doesn't do anything to it. As soon as you do that, you can style those elements. You can script them, do all kinds of things. It's so simple, it's phenomenal. And then you just, they just delete the elements after the, after it's over, so there's not, it's not sitting around in memory. Yes? How old is Internet Explorer? Six. Six and up? Six and up. Um, there are some problems with six in using uh, the like a named. So if you use an aside in the cascade, occasionally it won't pick up the styles, but uh, otherwise it, it works fine. I mean, we we have the site in production. Now. The stuff we didn't do that I'll show you was CSS three. It wasn't in the user five stuff. So. Um, and then the one change that most people won't even notice is that there's no more type for a, a style sheet, because there's only one type of style sheet on the web, CSS, and you don't need to say it's text CSS anymore. Um, little thing, but it is a change. So there's the header. Uh, I let, like I said, I left the ID in so the styles work. Um, it's also safe for, like I said, with, just, with IE6. And there's the H group. And the big change is that it used to be a P class equals description, and now it's an H2, so those are a semantic grouping. Um, what you would do with that, I don't know, but that's not for me to decide. Whatever. So, that finally makes sense. This, this is a, a wirenet.com, which is Kramer's blog we did as HTML5 with some CSS3 fanciness, which I'll show you later. Uh, well, I'll show you a picture of it later. Um, same thing, power sets, simil, you know, simplified, doc types simplified. Uh, the big change here that you actually need to, there's two things I want to point out. Class equals Node.js. You have to attach that to the HTML element if you're going to use Modernizer, which is a library that handles a lot of this stuff uh, and adds some, well, you'll see in a second, some fancy uh, classes on the HTML element so you can script and style things accordingly. Um, that's a, it doesn't say Modernizer, it's all the script for the site in one file for performance's sake. So this is what happens when you run this. And the class is, okay, so JS, so well, it's running JavaScript. Canvas, it supports Canvas. Canvas text, geolocation, RGBA, HSLA, all of those things. If it says no, you can't use it. So you can use that either in your style sheet, so you can say, you know, dot RGBA, and then you add, you know, an RGBA value to your style sheet, or you can do whatever your alternative would be. That's probably the best example because you could do something else. But or border radius, you know, you could say I'm going to use border radius here. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a class of border radius on the HTML element, run this script to fake it. Um, pretty cool. <coughs> You'll see more of that later. Index PHP. Uh, uh, so here's the article. Um, one thing that you will notice that's different is there's an H1 inside there. It used to be an H2. There's a new um, outline algorithm. Uh, the idea being, and this is a good one, if you took this article element, and you could build a script for this pretty easily, if you took this article element and dropped it into a page, it would now outline any page on the internet, if it's HTML5, it would outline correctly. Right? So if you dropped it in with an H2, and it was a sub below an H3, or some, you know, it, it, it's easier to drop it in anywhere, it's easier to syndicate this content. Um, but that's one of the things that you have to play around with is the new outlining algorithm, and I'll show some examples of that at the end. There's a time element. So the interesting thing here, pub date equals pub date, which is, this is actually um, Firebug. It's just pub date indicates that the time that you're serving indicates a publication date for an article. Uh, and then the date time is a computer readable uh, date time string. So you use the time and just pass it C, it gives it the whatever, I forget what it's called, but the, the full um, time string. And you'll see some views of this in a minute. Um, and then we just, the human readable time is a child of that. Uh, the nav, nav class equals navigation. Um, now you know that that's navigation. So, uh, like I said, you can imagine some accessibility enhancements that's one of the things we're always dealing with. It's like, 
show a screen reader where the navigation is or allow them to skip it, they can build in some shortcuts for that. Um, yes? I guess I just have a, a, a kind of a 50,000 feet level. The woman from Automatic said that WordPress, even in the next version of 3 hours, is really they're not thinking about HTML5 at all. So are you changing the core code? Are you changing... This is just a thing. You, you can download this right now. You can actually download it from my site right now, drop it in, and run it. And you don't touch any core code. This is just on top of the existing, the existing code. So anything that in effect is written to deal with HTML5, we don't really have to care whether WordPress knows. Well, what that's it's about. the reason I started using. This gets back to the, really the reason I started using WordPress in the beginning is that I have complete control over the output. Not complete, but almost complete control over the output. The markup is the way that I want it. So I want to do HTML5 on top of it. This, this is like six hours of work, and I almost have a, a version of the thing that I'm comfortable with. Now, WiderNet was a, a full, you know, blown out site build, but, you know, WordPress is like, I'm giving you content. Right, okay. You know, I, what we do around it, we could do horrible sites. We could do tables all over the place. And, okay, well, well, assuming that you're limiting yourself kind of to the HTML5, it's kind of well, you're pretty darn certain yeah. it's going to make it to the final spec. Assuming that you can deal with the IE6 and their after issues through this JavaScript thing, why wouldn't everyone then do this? People aren't as adventurous, which is fine. I mean, I don't do this all the time. I do XHTML sites for people. I mean, you have to. Um, you know, clients don't want to don't want you to experiment with their money, right? Okay. Um, and you know, some people like. That's one of the controversies. That some people like XHTML. They like the XML format, they wish that HTML5 hadn't kind of won the war that's been waged behind everybody's back, kind of. Um, you know, so they're going to just go ahead and keep doing what they're doing, and they're fine. I mean, this, you know, the thing is, HTML5 is, is designed to not break things, so, you know, it's designed to be backwards compatible, and, you know. Hope that answered. So this is it, uh, run, and why am I showing this? Uh, oh, the, you, so you can actually see the date time there. So there's, the computer can take that and say, oh, this is when this was published. Phenomenal. Um, anything else interesting there? No. Sidebar. So like I said, I made it a, an aside. There's, like I said, there's discussion of, about whether or not that's what it's for. It seems like a no-brainer to me. It seems like the, if there isn't an element for a sidebar, why? Because they're all over the place. Um, but there are people that think it goes the other direction. But time thing you mentioned is really like the time to this page is published. Yes. So from a search engine point of view, that sounds fantastic because you're obsessed with fresh content. Yes. And then, and then not just. I mean, search engines. Search engines. You can start. And who knows how this is going to play out long term with search engines? But you can start to imagine with an article element. So one of the th things, if you do any SEO, sometimes. People are like, there's a discussion, or well, it was a discussion. It's like, do I get the content closer to the top because there's a character limit sure, or right. things like that? Um, going forward, they can say, oh, this is an article. This is the point of this page, right? right? So I can weight everything inside an article element 1.5 over something in a sidebar in terms of you know passing a link juice or something like that. There's a lot of kind of interesting things about that. So I wonder if you could write just a little JavaScript <coughs> program to kind of updating the time publishing the, the, the full search engine. Well, I mean, if you just updated the... Oh, actually, I don't know about the timestamp. But you could. I mean, you could... But they'd figure it out. They'd say, oh, well, the content's the same. You know? I mean, because they already recognize fresh content anyway. They say, oh, well, the, the date's the same, but they run it. They say, well, this is the copy I have. It's the same thing. Yeah, so. I have to... I, I suspect their duplicate content algorithms. I mean, that's a really hard problem to solve, and it's got such a massive... Stuff. So, so I suspect you're not as good as people think they are. They might be. Yeah. But it's yeah, just another, it's like one of those things to start to think of. It's like, um, you know, how does it play with search? So, search form. So we have the first placeholder. And input type equals search, which I didn't come up with an example for. Uh, but the placeholder is that placeholder text. You don't have to script that. The problem is, I think it's only Opera 10 that supports it right now. <laughs> Um, but you got to start somewhere, right? Uh, comments, so these are real simple. Type equals email. A lot of code for two examples. 
type equals URL, so those could have some, some browser vendor sugar on top of it. Footer? What is a footer? It's the only change. Footer ID equals footer. It's redundant, but it's easier to style. And uh, I didn't have to actually change any style sheets in the default theme. What's the diff? Get it? Um, I, I'm not here for humor. Um, <laughs> not many changes in that one. Uh, just to give you, in a, this is between the, the default and the new version. Uh, oh, I skipped ahead there. There was a CSS one where it showed that I had to make a few more changes. Um, archives PHP, so this is actually where I used the section element. So I didn't use it for a generic wrapper. Um, I used it for, this is the archives by month section. And then this is the archives by subject section. So if you look at the outline, you play around with the section tag, you'll see if you use it incorrectly, you'll get a lot of untitled sections in your outline, which are weird, and you can use them this way. This will all the talk I've done about outlining will make sense in a second because I can show you some. Um, you have to give. You can do this individually, but it's useful to you give block display to every HTML5 element you're using because they just assume it's inline; they don't do anything. So. If you just do this, at least it'll behave like a paragraph or a div. Um, you can also, like I said, style them individually, but I like to do it at the top just so you remember. It's like, okay, at least they won't break if I forget one. Don't give it an ID or something like that. Um, oh, there it is. So there's, uh, you can see there's a bunch more yellow in, in the style sheet. Not a big deal. So this is where you do the fun stuff with uh, CSS3, which this isn't about, but Modernizer brings this along. So, border radius, box shadow, RGBA. I have all three of those. I can do fancy, look at that, rounded corners. There's a drop shadow on that. No images, just an article element with those styles attached. So, modernizer is cool if you're looking to script and or take advantage of the CSS3 stuff. Things I learned. The new outline algorithm is a fickle master. Some weird things came out. But that's why I'm doing this now, so that I can learn them now and, and you know, know them going forward. Otherwise, it wasn't so bad. Uh, Kubrick actually worked with almost no browser-specific intervention in modern browsers. So the latest, greatest, it actually just ported over. i6 and i7, I, I have to adjust the styles a little bit to make them to look the same. But And I can show you that in a second. So, any questions? But I'll just show you real quick. The uh, Hopefully you can see this. So. There's a browser camera port. Can you see that at all? All right, well, imagine <laughs> that you saw like 20 screenshots that are almost exactly identical. I ran a browser camera port against every browser that they have and this port of Kubrick, and most of them turned out exactly the same. IE6 and 7 have a slightly bigger H1 inside the article element, so I'd have to target that. Um, and then, well, let's see if you can see these. You probably can't. Uh, can you see that? No? All right. Well, that's a really clean outline, but I'm going to skip it because you can't see it. You have a question? So you had the rounded corners using CSS3, yeah. and it worked in IE6 and 7? No, we scripted it. So we were able to use, it's not easy, uh, but we were, I mean, it is easy, but it's extra work. So it's an extra, like, kind of eight-line script that we used the lack of border radius on the HTML element to trigger, like, you know, you can run tests using that. So the presence is there, and then, hey, let's do this. And if not, you know, we run this little script. And all it did was insert a div at the top and a div at the bottom, and, and then we just targeted the rest with CSS. So it wasn't that bad, but it was a little bit of extra work. Um, you could alternatively, if you want to, like, kind of punish Internet Explorer users. And I know that some people like to do that. You could just, like, turn it into a square box. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I can't, you know. I don't, I don't want to punish anybody. I want all my users to be happy, but I know some people think that way. Yeah? Um, where do you stand on the use of the dialogue tag to mark up comments? That's one of those ones that I'm not sure of yet, and as you can see, I didn't get anywhere near it. Um, and I really would, I, I, I don't even know where, to, where I stand on that one yet. It's kind of one of those, it, it's uh, It's not necessarily a dialogue. It's yeah, it's not necessarily a dialogue. Um, there's been some discussion of the dialogue tag and DLs and DDs. This, this is one of these arcane, kind of weird, controversial things that 
people are trying to work through. So I skipped it. So. Yeah. Um, so obviously, whenever there are systemic kind of new coding changes like HTML5 and CSS3, you have to wait for browsers to catch up. I mean, earlier you were talking about yeah. how the placeholder thing was only working in Opera 10. Yeah. Can you recommend any good resources for seeing what kind of works where? Or do you have to, unfortunately, kind of... Up until now, individually? you could use... So looking for browser resources, resources on what works in what browser. Up until now, I would have just pointed you to, to Quirks mode. So PBK, Peter Coke, he's like JavaScript genius guy from the Netherlands. Um, and quirksmode.org is a site, and he's listed, he's had these browser compatibility tables that he's been working on for ages. He's now being paid by, I don't even know who he's being paid by, but to do the same thing with mobile browsers. So he's doing all this mobile browser research, and I feel like he's kind of let the other tables go a little bit. Um, knowing him, he'll probably get you know, a fit of curiosity and, and fill them out again. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I pay enough attention to this stuff that I don't need to do one-stop shopping, so I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer. Yeah, that's fine. There's got to be, there's got to be a resource out there. Anybody else? Um, would you use a file tag on just like a single page or would you wrap excerpts in it too? I wrap excerpts in it because the way I thought of it is you could syndicate I mean, people publish RSS feeds that are, I kind of thought of it like an RSS feed. So it's either you're publishing an article that's a full article, or you're publishing and letting people republish an article that's an excerpt pointing back to the full content. I actually just kind of thought about that for a second. Um, but I went with it. So. Anybody else? It does the, so what it does, and I actually have one more slide I can show that you'll be able to read as opposed to everything else on the machine. Uh, I will do that and I will. So these are some resources. The What Working Group, you probably can't see that. Maybe you can. What Working Group was, is, is a kind of interesting story about how this all started. If you go to the second link, which is dive into html5.org and read the first chapter. A Brief History of HTML, which was just published this week, you will find about, out about the fascinating story of how specs are written and how this one came to be. Uh, the third link is modernizer.com, where you download the library. The library does two things. One, it tests for support for all the things that you saw in the, uh, in the, the HTML tag. And it does that little script that makes the unknown elements work in Internet Explorer. So it depends on what you're going to do. If you're going to do the CSS3 stuff, if you're going to do Canvas, if you're going to do any of those things, and all the attendant extra work that it takes, use Modernizer. If you're not, because it's like 6K minified, or something like that, don't quote me on that, um, versus like five lines. If you're just using the elements, just use the script. You have to put the script, by the way, you have to put before anything else happens on the page. Styles won't get picked up. You can't retroactively make IE recognize them. So that's why it's at the top. Normally, I put scripts at the bottom. But. OK. I guess that's it. So um, you can't read that. Uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript.com. I'll put links up like in 10 minutes um, if you want to download the presentation. This, uh, you know, check out some other reasons. So. the links where? Where? HTML, CSS, JavaScript.com. I'll have a blog post up just to make up for the fact that you can't read this in 10 minutes. Because the last one is actually a, a, that site where you can download Kubrick and mess around with it. Like. HTML, CSS, JavaScript.com, one word. Yes. No, I, I, I can't see it from here. Cool.